So first a bit of self-reflection for myself. So not for the public yet, but maybe later. Wow, what am I going through? Yesterday I went to the hospital for my checkup with the anesthetist about my operation and surprisingly agreed to have epidural instead of full narcotic. And yeah, really surprising because I, I just took it for granted they're going to give me the they're going to intubate me and I'll have the full narcotic. And after a discussion with the anesthetist, I agreed to an epidural after she reassured me that it's not quite the same as the epidural that you get for giving birth because I told her that during Christoph's birth I had the epidural and in a very short time I was feeling lots of pain again. That was I didn't tell her, but I remember the issue there was my broken rib which was plaguing me until after his birth when they finally took the x-ray and confirmed what I had suspected all along that I had had a broken rib from the car accident shortly before Godwin's birth in 1980 in November was the car accident 1988 1989 January Godwin was born and April 1990 Christoph was born and then they finally took the x-ray and said yes one day you had uh, at some stage you've had a broken rib yeah that's not what I was going to talk about <laughs> I was going to talk about, you know, tomorrow's my birthday. And of course, I don't want to say in, in public, in my public vlog, yeah, I'm going to be 66. And yet, actually, that's exactly the point. I'm so grateful. I think of Maurice. I think of Elizabeth Riddle, 64 and 66. And they didn't get any further. And what happened to me yesterday? Yes, Johannes Stumpf has gone into rehab for his heart. He had a heart operation and I'm so proud to be editing his book, which we are ready to publish. And I'm looking forward to my knee operation because to me, what it means, it promises an active life. The activity that I'm longing to do, which is happening all up here, but not with my physical body. I feel totally crippled with my knees. and. After the talk with the anesthetist and the surgeon about my knee operation, the first one, I was on my way home and getting off the bus, getting ready to catch the tram, which dropped me off at my front door. There was a grocery store just across the road, so I decided to buy myself some lunch before coming home. And I was actually quite exhausted from the whole walking around the hospital grounds, looking for the places I had to go to and waiting. I had I, I actually made a video in the park in the hospital, which was very nice. Mm -hmm. And there I was on the tram. And it just sped up much too much. Two stops before we got home. And I was thrown off my seat flat on my back in the number five tram at Floriani Gasse, flat on my back, I tell you, that tram stopped, the people shouted and screamed and called the police, the driver came and asked me whether I need an ambulance, I didn't know what had happened to me. I spent the rest of the day at the hospital, the Akaha here in Vienna, while well, they did an MRI of my head and an X-ray of my thigh. I've got a great big bruise like this on my thigh. <laughs> my head still feels funny and I've got aches and pains in the neck and in the joints, in the, in the ribs. And I was saying to Joseph this morning, or just a little while ago, I have to really keep positive. Uh, you know, it could be the aches and pains of a virus. I, sne I coughed once this morning. And I'm just so obsessed with this operation. If I have any sort of an infection, they will not operate. And we are just coming out of lockdown. The COVID has not been won over. And I am ultra cautious, but I don't want to wind myself up with the negative thoughts that I could have COVID. I'm just very aware 
of the various possibilities and options and uh, yeah it, it hurts here in my ribs when I breathe yeah the, I don't know what happened I was sitting on the seat in the second half of the tram it was in one of the old trams just as in the front door of the back part of the tram and as I struggled up the stairs with my sore knees and my Nordic walking sticks and my heavy shopping bag a lady sitting in that chair stood up to let me sit down and I was grateful for it and I sat there with my walking sticks and and thought yes this is for me and yes you were quite right to stand up for me I am a crippled old lady I don't I don't really believe that about me I don't really say that <laughs> That's not my self-image, and yet, to a certain extent, it's true. Anyhow, she let me sit there, but when that tram sped around the corner, everybody got sh sh shaken, and I recognised when I lost the position of the seat, and I tried to grab hold, and then there was another jerk, and I was flat on my back on the ground on the floor of that tram anyhow yeah i spent the rest of the afternoon at the akaha and they yeah whether i can say they assured me everything is all right i don't know because when the doctor came to ask me how are you i had been lying on this hard stretcher for hours and realized yeah well i didn't need to go to the toilet the whole time because i hadn't eaten or drinking anything had, hadn't had anything to drink all day apart from the glass of water that the driver brought me after the accident and realized yeah maybe it was time for me to go to the toilet they told me then that i could wait for the ambulance to drive me home which would be another three or four hour wait and i said no it's okay i can go home by tram but if, even now look my head is still it's it's i can't say it's a headache it's really this this feeling that, uh, yeah, I guess it's the concussion. That's what it feels like. You know, in German we say Gehirnerschütterung. That's what it feels like, that my brain inside my head has been shaken and it's sore. Anyhow, what I'm expressing here is you don't know how much time you've got. You don't know. You don't know. Think of Elizabeth and Marisi. And when the tram driver asked me do you need an ambulance i hesitated i thought i just want to go home and have my lunch and maybe lie down and then i thought yeah and if something is really wrong and i lie down i might not wake up again really really i may not have woken up again so i, I spent the hours at the hospital you could say under observation, even though I didn't have the feeling anybody was watching me at all. And I only realized when I got home in the evening that the reason that they probably didn't take my temperature or my blood pressure or my pulse was simply because of the coronavirus, because of the distancing rules. As a former nurse, I know that when we had people under observation, we were checking their, their responses every few minutes, every few hours every half hour at the beginning and nobody measured any of my pulse or my blood pressure or my temperature i mean at, at the hospital at the baumgartner her when i went for the checkup for my knee operation yes they did check my temperature before they even let me into the hospital grounds just to make sure i wasn't a carrier of covid after that there was no monitoring and when I think what I wanted was reassurance, I wanted somebody to tell me, you're okay, everything is okay. And when the doctor came to ask me, are you okay? Yes, I told her that my head is still funny. In fact, even now, 24 hours later, my head is still funny. Does that mean it's going to turn into something really bad? I don't want to focus on turning into something really bad because I do believe in the power of thought and prayer and uh, imagination. And look, it's nearly 10 minutes and I don't want to focus on the negative things. I want to focus on what's good. I'm recording this for posterity, if ever, anybody ever looks at it. And I really want to do a positive blog now. Blog. 
God bless you. Be grateful. Make the most of everything that you have. See it from God's point of view.